don't focus on my face, focus on my hand. Now we've got the original blush gloss with Pompadour. Honestly, I'm so excited to compare blush and blush lightness together because we'll see if they're actually different. Hi guys, it's Aijing here. At this point, you all know the drill. We're going to swatch all of these eight new shades on my lips, compare these shades with her existing lip glosses that she's released already and see what's similar, what's not to help you make your purchasing decisions. So as usual, I'm going to swap all of these shades full on on my lips. I'll do one layer, two layers, show you how you can build up opacity and then we'll do half and half comparisons on my lips so you can really see how these shades compare to each other. We've got a lot to do so let's just get on with it. Before I start, I just want to show you this is what my face looks like. At the moment I'm actually wearing the Pat McGrath foundation in the shade 7 but the Lisa Aldridge foundation I wear shade 9. Some The shade 9 is like a little bit too light around certain parts of my face like on my forehead but it does blend perfectly around like my cheek area and you can see my lips they are like not that pigmented I'm just gonna give them a little wipe in case there's like foundation there but my lips are kind of they're not that pigmented they're just kind of like a pale pink and there are there are actually some cool tones in my lips unlike my face which is generally kind of warm greeny olive leaning most of you that watch this you already own lots of Lisa Eldridge products so you know about her price point packaging etc etc but in case you're new I am going to just go through that kind of at the end of the video so it can stick around if you want to watch that um, but let's just get the shade swatch started this is silent sun the finest dense gold pearl swirled into a transparent glossy base once on the lips the pearl is only subtly discernible for the most delicate luxuriously golden luster puts me in mind of artist Olafur Elise so this is what one layer of silence sun looks like as you can see it's mostly just a clear gloss um i really do think the golden shimmers are very subtle and really not noticeable at all to be honest i am going to build this up to two three layers ish and see if that gold shimmer is a little bit more obvious so it's getting a little bit sticky now because of how many layers i've put on so in this lighting i can see tiny flecks of gold particles it is really not obvious at all and it's about three layers on my lips now but what lisa said was that the gold flecks really become obvious in natural sunlight and you can see on the back of my hand here that really is just a clear gloss i do really like silent sun by the way dancing rose a blend of rose pink lavender and violet tiny glittering pearls suspended in a clear glossy base resulting in a cool tone subtly sparkling iridescence and now we've got a layer of dancing rose on my lips so lisa did say that there are kind of blue glitters in a dancing rose lip gloss as well i've only got one layer right now on i don't really see the blue glitters that much but this one definitely have more shimmering particles than silent sun the pink particles are really obvious not in a bad way it's just that when i wear this one i can really see them so let's build up to a second layer so this is two layers and i'm just scooch a little bit closer so you can see my lips even more yeah, so I really, I feel like you can't really see it very well on camera, but there are a lot of really pretty ultraviolet and pink glitters in here. I should say shimmers really, because they're not like big glitter particles. And on the back of my hand immediately, it's very obvious as well. So I do feel like this gloss is probably one of the most transformative glosses. Like Lisa said, you know, you know in her video, she put it on top of a velvet ribbon and it gave velvet ribbon a slightly kind of like pink glimmer to it. So I do feel like this shade can complement a lot of different lipsticks in her collection. If you're someone who likes to use gloss on top of a lipstick and have that lipstick just be slightly different, then you might like the shade. So top one is Silent Sun. The bottom one is dancing rose and you can see that pink shimmer and glimmer is a lot more obvious so i've got silent sun on this side and dancing rose on this side now and on camera i do think the differences are minuscule um in real life it just this one obviously just looks more pink you probably don't need both but if you like to have a more of a transformative gloss that will change your lipstick a little bit then i think dancing rose might be a cool fun lip gloss to play with but if you're after just like a nice clear lip gloss then silent sun is a good shout there are gold shimmers but they're so subtle 
Rain is a muted, medium, warm pink that instantly brightens his face. So this is the shade Rain, just one thin layer. And let's build it up. So this is Rain kind of with two, three layers now. And you can see it's more impactful with its pigment. So the way I would describe Rain is like a juicy grapefruit, um, like the inside of like a nice juicy red grapefruit. I really hope you guys can see that. So the long big swatch there is Rain. And going from the top, we've got Dragon, Ribbon, Charm, Petal, Beauty, then Songbird. And then we've got the two new shades at the bottom, which is Blush Lightly and Pompadour. So I don't think it's worth comparing all of these on the back of my hand on my lips because I feel like some of them are so obviously different. So I'm just going to pick out the five that I think look most similar. So this is Dragon against Rain. Dragon has a lot more pigment. I only applied a thin layer of Dragon. But yeah, these two are definitely very different. And now we've got Petal against Rain, and you can see Petal is really slightly more beige, definitely a more muted colour. Rain has more brightness to it. And now we've got Songbird and Rain. So again, Songbird definitely more of a straight up nude beige. I completely forgot about Muse. So now this is Muse and this is Rain. So Muse its pigment level and its depth of tone is very similar but rain just has a touch more pink and coraliness to it can you see so now we've got pompadour the new shade and rain on the other side so yeah pompadour is really just more of a straight up pink isn't it finally we've got blush lightly against rain So again, Blush Lightly really is a bit more of a cool tone pink and Rain is more of a warm tone pink and with a bit of coral to it as well. And just to satisfy my own curiosity, I wanted to compare Go Lightly with Rain um, because Go Lightly has got coral tone to it. Um, but yeah, Go Lightly has definitely more of a brighter, milky, like paler pastel finish. By the way, guys, if you see lip gloss on my teeth, it can't be helped, so please don't come for me for it. Pompadour, a mix of cool and warm undertones, makes this fresh and lively true pink ridiculously pretty whilst still being wearable. Applied lightly, Pompadour gives a fresh wash or build up for full on Rococo romance. So, this is one layer of Pompadour. Okay, so two full on layers of Pompadour let's compare okay so now we've got the big swatch of pompadour and going from the top we've got blush blush lightly petal beauty and then charm okay so we've got blush lightly and pompadour compared pompadour is definitely a little bit brighter blush lightly has a little bit of that smokiness to it now we've got the original blush gloss with pompadour Honestly, I'm so excited to compare blush and blush like this together because we'll see if they're actually different. Yeah, but obviously with Pompadour, I think you can really see the difference there. Again, there's more of that smokiness to blush, a bit of that cool tone. Like it's got that little bit of cool tone brown undertone to it. Right? So now we've got Petal against Pompadour. The Petal is just more of that neutral. And when you compare these two, Pompadour is more of a pink and Petal looks more like it's got that coral undertone to it. So now is the one that you guys have all asked me for and one that I've been curious about myself, which was how beauty will compare to Pompadour. So the difference is subtle, but the difference is definitely there. You can see beauty has a lot more brightness to it. It is more of an obvious pink, whereas I feel like Pompadour now compared to beauty looks a little bit more muted so i think pompadour is probably a more wearable pink so if you've been thinking about getting a pink gloss like a true pink gloss from lisa eldridge i think pompadour is actually a pretty nice shade to go for but i think if you already have beauty you don't need pompadour because it's literally like a shade a tone of a difference and Seriously, unless you do this, you're not going to notice the difference. So save your money. Blush Lightly, a medium muted cool toned pink with a delicate mauve undertone. 
So this is one layer of blush lightly. And I'll try to build it up, but I feel like it's already at a pretty good pigment level. Okay, so I don't think I want to build it up anymore because then it would just be really thick and gloopy and that's not what anyone wants. So this is Blush Lightly. A really, really pretty shade. I really prefer this shade in this formula compared to the lip liner or the lipstick. Okay, so now we've got Blush, Sombird, Affair, Cinnabar, Muse and then Petal. By the way guys, if you see like fiber marks or if you see like the gloss is not looking that smooth, it's not because of the gloss, it's because I'm wiping my lips constantly and it's the fibers from my makeup remover cloth. Okay, so the like formula is excellent. So please don't worry about like it not looking smooth. That is my fault, not the formula's fault. So now we've got blush and got blush lightly on this side. So there is actually a little bit of a difference, which honestly I am surprised by. I did pack on both of these colors to really see if there's a difference. However, if you're just wearing one layer, really you don't need both of these glosses. So what I'm finding is that blush, obviously being deeper, I feel like it's got more of a brown to it compared to blush lightly. Blush Lightly just looks more of a straight up pink. And even on the back of my hand as well, as I'm looking at it, like blush just looks a touch more brown. So that is a difference. But I feel like if you have blush already, you don't need blush lightly. And if you're debating between the two, really, you know, if you want something with more of a brown undertone, go for blush. But if you want something more like a mauve rose, then go for blush lightly. Okay, now we've got Muse and Blush Lightly. So yeah, you can see the difference in tones, in the color, yeah. And now we've got Petal against the Blush Lightly on this side. So I feel like Petal is just more of a nude pink, whereas the Blush Lightly is more like a mauve pink. I'm not gonna compare like Songbird and Cinnabar with Blush Lightly because I feel like the, the difference is pretty obvious already as you saw in the back of my hand. Carnival, Warhol worthy, electric pink, vinyl gloss, the blue undertones just make this acid pink hit different, pure lacquered attitude. So this is just one layer of Carnival on my lips and you can see this gloss packs a punch when it comes to pigment and brightness. It's pretty amazing colour. I do really like the Carnival lipstick but I do think this cool toned fuchsia pink is not easy to pull off. And I know a couple of you guys said in the comments that Carnival looked amazing on me in my shorts, but honestly, I'm not I'm not sure about this shade on me. Um, I feel like it's really con contrasting and clashing a little bit with my undertones. But I feel like if you have a medium skin tone or you have a dark skin tone, like this just would look so amazing. It would look just so bright and lively on you. If you have pale skin with cool tones, I feel like this would also look amazing on you. But um, <laughs> I'm not sure about it on me, to be honest. And for sure, this is definitely the most unique release like this is the most unique gloss that she has because let's be honest she doesn't have any other gloss like this but we'll do some comparisons anyway okay so here's some shades in the back of my hand obviously we've got carnival down the side and then from the top we've got delilah beauty charm and then go lightly so yeah you can see really like nothing compares the closest one that you have is delilah but that's because Delilah's got that cool kind of lilac-y tone to it, but because Delilah's pigmentation level is lower, you know, the two are not going to be comparable. And when you compare Beauty with it as well, Beauty really is so much more muted. Also, I just want to say that this Carnival gloss, even though it's so pigmented, the pigment is so even. It doesn't apply patchy, which I'm really, really impressed by. Okay, so here we have it, Delilah and Carnival. And we've got Beauty against Carnival now. And actually what I'm going to do is compare Pompadour with Carnival. Oh yeah, there's no comparison. Now like Pompadour looks like a nude next to Carnival, which I think is hilarious. Because against the other shades, Pompadour looked like such a bright pink. And just so you notice, what it, Pompadour is another long swatch down the back of my hand in the middle. Sorcery, 
a cool toned earthy rose with a touch of mauve one swipe will give you a shit your lips but better and build up is a total 90s indie girl so this is one thin layer of sorcery and i'm gonna try and pack on the pigment a little bit okay so i don't think i can put any more on i can really feel the lip gloss on my lips right now um but this is kind of what sorcery looks like really really packed on and i feel like even with it really packed on it's still quite a subtle color it i feel like it's looking a little bit patchy at the moment because i just have way too many layers on my lips but you can see the cool tones in there. You can see the gray in there, but it's still super wearable because it's not that pigmented. So this is a sorcery. And that's what was so surprising about sorcery because a sorcery velvet lipstick, obviously so pigmented because it's that velvet formula. But with this pigment level in this gloss really is like your lips, but a better shade. I think depending on your undertones, the shade will look different. It might look a little bit more warm, it might look a little bit more cool, depending on your skin and your natural lip colour. Um, but I think just on most people, it's just going to be like a straight up nude, which is really, really lovely. Okay, so now we've got some swatches on the back of my hand. The big strip, obviously, Sorcery, and then we've got Decade, Affair, Petal, songbird and then muse and i just want to show you decade compared to sorcery because i thought these two would look similar but because decade actually has so much more pigment um yeah they're completely different so now we're going in for the big guns so we've got affair and sorcery affair just has so much more pigment and because of that it's really got that nude brown colour to it, whereas Sorcery has got that lucency, that transparency. So even though it's that cool toned brown, because it's so lucent, your natural lip colour shines through. So it's really wearable. But then because, so even though it's sort of a nude, and you think a fair is also a nude, but because a fair has more of a pigment, so it's hiding your natural lip colour. So they look different. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, I feel like I just talked myself into a, a riddle there but I really hope you understand what I mean um yeah <laughs> let's just have a look at these again so affair and a sorcery so you can see that gorgeous caramel beigey color of affair it was really obvious on my lips but with sorcery it's really just like a light wash of this cool tone brown and now we've got Sunbird compared to Sorcery. So Sunbird is like kind of my go-to nude gloss, to be honest, because it's kind of like that pale, pinky nude tone that I really, really love. And compared to Sorcery, like Sorcery looks more like my lips, you know? On her website, she does say Sorcery is like your lips, but better colour with one sheer layer and really do think that's true. Um, Let me just try to build up Sorcery again. But the thing is, I feel like when I try to build up Sorcery, it can get a little bit patchy. But on Lisa's website, she says that if you build up Sorcery, it gives you that indie it girl vibe, right? But I feel like even as I build it up now, I still think it's like just a really wearable nude. Do you see what I mean? And compared to Sombird, obviously Sombird is a wearable nude as well. But I think Sorcery probably is a little bit more subtle because of my skin tone, like Sombird, because it's a bit pale. I feel like maybe it's a bit obvious that I have lip gloss on. But with Sorcery, it's almost like potentially I could have just put on clear gloss and it's just my lip colour. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Okay, so now we've got muse against sorcery what do you think so essentially these two are in the same tonal family and i think you could even see that in the tube like they've got the same sort of coolness to them they're both in that sort of pinky brown when you just look at the tube sorcery is just a little bit darker i would say that it's probably a touch more cool tone there's just a touch more gray in there but on my lips, it doesn't really look like it. On my lips, it just looks like Sorcery is the darker version of Muse. They're definitely sisters. So I don't know if you need both. They are different, as you can see. 
But then it really depends how you wear your lip gloss, what your natural lip pigmentation is like. If you have fair, like light colored lips like me, then the difference obviously is gonna show up a little bit more. But if you have a deeper skin tone, I'm like, I'm not sure if these two will be enough of a difference. But then the thing is like, Gen genuinely so sorcery is a great color um i wore this all day yesterday and today as well when i was out i i loved it like it is so easy to wear and it is probably my favorite of the new release my other favorite is silent sun just because i honestly love a good old clear lip gloss yeah i mean decide for yourself like if you have muse already which i think most of you probably do do you want sorcery what do you think? Do you want sorcery as well? I mean, yeah, I don't think you need it, um, but it is a pretty colour. <laughs> Decade, a cool toned, syrupy chocolate hue that sits comfortably between a brown and a berry. Delicious! So this is one layer of Decade. Let's try to build this one up. So when I, in my reel, I did mention that this got patchy when I tried to build it up. And obviously like Lisa's team um, saw my reel and they reached out and they say that it shouldn't be patchy, we're gonna send you a replacement. Uh, my replacement's already been shipped out. It's just insane, like her customer service. Um, we will see if the new tube is patchy, I will update you guys. But yeah, let's just build it up with this one I have now. So this is what it looks like right now. And I think you can see that there are parts of my lips that just, you know, has more pigment and parts of my lips that doesn't, hence the definition of patchy. I just think because this is so dark, it's just a little bit difficult to work with. But, you know, they, they are sending a replacement. or we'll see if that replacement tube is going to be different. But the thing is, like with a dark gloss, I, I feel like that's just kind of what's to be expected. Or like, I'm not expecting miracles. Do you know what I mean? So like, I, I don't really mind. I feel like even as I do more of that swiping back and forth, it gets less even. I'm definitely like way outside my lip line now, but you know, I kind of put another layer on to really build the pigment. What do you guys think? It's a, a very vampy shade for sure. So again, Decade is a very unique shade. We've got Cinnabar at the top, Myth at the second, and then Muse at the bottom. We've got Cinnabar and we've got Decade. So I think these two are the only two that are worth comparing on my lips. Like everything else is just so different. And you can see like Cinnabar is just warmer. Also, I do find even though with Cinnabar is a darker shade, and it's at the same pigmentation level, it does definitely go on more smoothly. There isn't any patchiness there. It's literally just like a couple swipes and I'm done. But with Decade, I don't know. I feel like the pushing and shoving motion just, yeah, it, it doesn't work well with it. I don't want to say that it's patchy definitely because they are sending a replacement. So I don't know if I have a bad one, but I feel like you just have to put, take it out of the pot, do one swipe, another swipe, and then it's definitely not patchy. <laughs> so I really wanted to try the Velvet Ribbon and Dancing Rose combination because Lisa looked so beautiful in her video and her promo photos with this combination on. And oh my God, yeah, I definitely love it. And I feel like this is the perfect like Christmas party lip look or any sort of party lip look really. So nice. Um, But at the risk of this going all over my teeth while I talk for the next two minutes and then watching it back whilst I'm editing, I am gonna take it off and put on Silent Sun. And no, that definitely did not happen just now and I'm definitely not re-recording the next part. Um, in case you didn't know and you're new to the Lisa Aldridge craze, so all of her products come in this white cardboard packaging with gold lettering and the packaging of the lip gloss themselves. They come in this kind of like sturdy plastic bottle. It's definitely plastic, it's not glass. And they've got this gold cap, which again is plastic, not metallic or anything. Her logo is there at the top and it's also down at the side. Beautiful packaging, feels luxurious, looks luxurious. And amazingly, this, these lip glosses have a 36 month shelf life and they're all made in Italy. Uh, some of them are vegan. I can't say that they're all of them are vegan, uh, but they are cruelty free brand. Honestly, I'm not a cruelty free brand expert. Like I don't fo follow like the blogs that say whatever is cruelty free. Uh, they are stated as cruelty free on Lisa's website. 
It costs £18 and there is 4.5 mil or 0.15 fluid ounce in there. I think £18 is the cheapest product you can get from Lisa's brand because her lipsticks are all like 20 something pounds and I think the lip liner might be 19 pounds. So this is I think the most affordable although 18 pounds for lip gloss obviously is still like high end pricing. So the gloss embrace formula, embellish your lips with a smooth non-sticky veil of color while simultaneously replenishing them with nourishing oils and butters. This clever multitasking formulation functions as an instant restoring treatment, cushioning the lips with emollient hydrators and leaving them as soft as silk. So it's a gloss and lip care hybrid with key lip care ingredients, including wild mango kernel butter, acai berry oil, please tell me I'm pronouncing that right, sunflower seed oil and vitamin E oil. So in terms of these moisturizing claims, I wore sorcery all day Saturday, reapplied it throughout the day. I woke up on Sunday morning and my lips felt pillow soft. My lips do not normally feel like that when I first wake up in the morning and these lip glosses made a huge difference to that. And in terms of the non-sticky claim, like I'm, I sort of agree with that. I don't say they're like 100% non-stick, but at the end of the day, it's a gloss. Like, that's what you get. You know, if there are loads of oils in there. Like, if it, you know, like if you think of olive oil, that's sticky. That, that's just the nature of the thing. And if you put a thin layer, you know, it just feels comfortable. It feels like a little bit of a lip mask. Obviously, if you pack like three layers on, it's, it's gonna get sticky. Um, but if I really whip my hair back and forth, the hair will get stuck to my lips. But honestly, at the end of the day, if you have a lip gloss that doesn't make your hair stick, I think that is against laws of nature. Um, there is no smell to these lip glosses. They are like just tip top formula in my opinion. They have like Charlotte Tilbury glosses. I've tried Mac, uh, Pat McGrath lip gloss. The only other lip gloss that I really like is a Seattle London lip gloss and that's purely because of the color, not because of the formula. And if you watch my all time favorite makeup video, you'll know which gloss I'm talking about. And you know, with lipsticks, you have like a matte lipstick, you have a satin lipstick, you have a creamy lipstick, you've got like different finishes. You have even Lisa herself, right? She's got three different lipstick for finishes, but with a lip gloss, right? like you can change the pigmentation a little bit you can put shimmer in there obviously you have different colors but at the end of the day a gloss is a gloss and those like that is it right there isn't so much you can do in terms of variation on gloss and I really do feel like this gloss formula is just the best it's the best I've tried I hate those Pat McGrath lip glosses to be quite frankly honest with you I feel like those colors are quite odd um whereas these colors I feel like they're all wearable I love them all some I prefer over others but honestly I do love them all Charlotte Tilbury glosses as well nothing compared to Lisa Eldridge and honestly the moisturizing claim is so true and I think that really makes her stand out above the rest in terms of all of her like lip formulas the velvet, the insanely saturated, the luxury translucent and these gloss embrace. I think her gloss is my favorite and I think I've said that before. So enough rambling. Let me know you guys, like do you want to see lip gloss compared with lipsticks? Like I said before, I do feel like they're apples and oranges, but if you're really keen for me to do them, I will make time and do them. I am going to do like a lip liner, lipstick, lip gloss, swatch type of video as well. That'll probably be a top down video. I don't think I'll do them on my lips. It would just be on the back of my hand because I truly do think those shades are very, very similar. Um, and if you're new here, hello, my name is Aijing. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, I would really love for you to subscribe and join my little corner of the internet. Everyone is really lovely here. We have very nice chats in the comments and I have really awesome chats with my subscribers on Instagram as well. So if you want to, you can follow me there. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, for giving me your time. Time is precious. Yeah, so thank you so much for clicking on my video and choose to watch it. It really means so much to me. And as always, um, I will see you in the next one. Bye. And I am sure I am speaking with lip gloss on my teeth right now.